Larry the Cable Guy appears at Liberty University, and guess what? He shares his testimony about his life. You gotta hear it. The Larry the yes. Cable Guy, uh, it's somebody, I think he's from Canton, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he goes to Liberty University and begins to share his testimony. But first, let's join him now as he first talks a little bit of humor. This is Larry the Cable Guy. His name is actually Daniel Whitney. Hmm. Let's go there now. Can we put our hands together for the great, the one, the only, Larry the Cable Guy? Come on! There you go. <laughs> well, look at this. Man, thanks for having me. Who canceled? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Donald Trump is president. Larry the Cable Guy is speaking at Liberty. The Lord is truly coming back soon, Harry. <laughs> it is so good to be here. You know, uh, the last time I was in Virginia, uh, the governor come down here and presented me with the key to the 24-hour fitness. <laughs> so I was excited about it. I'm actually celebrating a special time myself today. It is a double anniversary for me here today. It is my 28th year in the comedy business. And uh, please remain seated. And uh, my fifth year being funny. So I'm excited about all of it. So thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you very much. I, I guess I should do this before I do anything else. Get her done. Get her done. That's right. They say get her done everywhere. This is how they say get her done in China. <clears throat> That's right. This is how they say get her done in Nairobi. That's no lie. You can Google that. All right. So I got to tell you this story. My grandpa's 80, 93 years old. He come over to the house the other day, and he's dating uh, this gal that's 87. And I was having a dinner, and we were sitting there eating, and he leans over to me and says, Hey, you think she's hot? Well, I think she is now, Grandpa. Her face has been in the soup for 10 minutes. <laughs> Don't you? Here's the deal. Don't you hate it when somebody says you look exactly like somebody? And every time you see them, they go, Boy, you look just like so-and-so. Then you finally meet so-and-so. <laughs> Ugliest idiot you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> and then you realize, Dad gum, I look just like that ugly goof. <laughs> Makes me madder than Ronnie Millsap in a corn maze. <laughs> so check this out. This is true. So I go to a diner the other day, get something to eat. And the uh, waitress goes, uh, can I help you? <gasps> I go, what's wrong? She goes, holy mackerel. I go, what's wrong? She goes, you look just like the cook. I go, get the heck out of here. She goes, no, you can be his twin brother. I ain't never seen nothing like it. I said, well, let me see this good looking dude. Ugh. Did dude come wallowing out of there? Big old head. Looked like they've been cleaning the grill with his face for the last 25 years. I ain't kidding. You should have seen the size of his head. I ain't kidding. His driver's license picture was an eyebrow. All right? <laughs> that gum, and I looked exactly like him. He irritated me. And she goes, what do you want to eat? It's on the house. I'm like, I lost my appetite. All right? Maybe some sausage patties. So I ain't got to look at that ugly idiot right there. So this happened to me, too. Check this out. So I go to PetSmart to get some dog food for my dog. And the girl goes, I pay for my dog food. And then the girl goes, do you want to give an extra $20 to help feed the starving animals? I'm like, what do you think I'm doing now? All right, <laughs> putting this on my cornflakes? And she goes, you look familiar. I go, I'm a comedian. She goes, no, that's not it. And she goes, you're that cook up at the diner I seen last week. <laughs> Every time I go to Las Vegas, there's always a buddy of mine going like this. You going to Las Vegas? Yeah, why? Here. 
Here's three hundred dollars. Gamble it for me. All right. <laughs> Call me up two days later. How am I doing? You lost three hundred dollars. All right, I apologize. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm up three hundred. I'm doing pretty good out here. I'm having a good time out here. I was just with the troops in Fort Benning, Georgia here not long ago. And uh, it was weird though, they didn't want me to perform. They just wanted me to show up and show them all what they used to look like before they went to boot camp. <laughs> I gotta lose some weight. My tapeworm had a heart attack last week. All right, I ain't kidding with you. I ain't kidding with you. You know, you're getting fat when you can use the back of your neck as a travel pillow. <laughs> and I try to lose weight. I do everything, it's hard to do. I saw something the other day changed my life. I read an article in a magazine and it said, carbohydrates is the fastest way to the grave. So I told my wife right then, I said, sweetheart, circle the calendar. From now on, I'm done. That's it. From now on, I ain't reading nothing. <laughs> I tried to lose weight, went to see a dietitian. These guys are a bunch of idiots. You ever see these dietitians? I go see a dietitian. He says to me, all this money I spent, he goes, Larry, what you need to do, you need to eat six times a day. I already do that. <laughs> if I eat one more time a day, you're gonna see me at Walmart on the scooter wearing pajama jeans, all right? <laughs> God bless my wife, though. I've lost 20 pounds in three weeks. My wife got me a trainer, and I've lost 20 pounds trying to avoid him for the last three weeks. I've done that. I was on Nutrisystem for a while, and uh, I'd done commercials for them. You ever see my Nutrisystem commercials? That's right. I reckon uh, they're a little upset at me about right now. <laughs> I'm bad for business. <laughs> I'm the only guy ever went from doing Nutrisystem commercials to heartburn medication right up there. <laughs> I'm two biscuits away from a sleep apnea contract. No doubt about it. But I try to lose weight, it's hard to do. I blame a lot of it on Foxworthy for promoting the daggum Golden Crowd commercials. You ever see Harry the Golden Crowd? Boy, that's good stuff. Don't take more than two trips at a buffet, though. I'll tell you that much. Your toilet will take a knee. I guarantee you. I guarantee you that ain't good. And I hate all these uh, food police that try to make up stories so you don't eat at Golden Crowd. That irritates me. I'm on the computer, the internet the other day. There's an icon on there that says, Click on this, you'll never eat at Golden Corral again. I'm like, what in the world? I click on it, it was me. <laughs> I love Golden Corral. I ate a Golden Corral last week so many times, Chris Christie started following me on Twitter. All right. <laughs> but I haven't lost my weight. I done made her in the movie Cars and... Uh, <laughs> That's right, and I, that's how I gained weight. I wanted to do good, so I put on weight, you know. A tow truck's a lot of weight, so. That's how good I am. I'm the only guy that puts on weight to do voiceovers. <laughs> Let me say this. Uh, I got a funny story I want to tell you about Mater real quick. Um, I was doing the Disney Cruise, uh, the, the launch of the fantasy, my first time ever. And uh, they wanted me on there. Everybody's on there. The Disney execs, the Pix execs, Bob Iger, John Lasseter, and John wanted me to come and do two shows in the showroom. I said, yeah, John, I'll do it. So I get done, and this is a true story. He goes, uh, hey, do me a favor. Go up to the, where the ship's captain is, make a ship's announcement as Mater and tell everybody thanks for coming on the boat. And then when you're done, introduce you and tell everybody thanks for coming to the show. They'll, they'll, they'll love it on the boat. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm Mater, so there's not much of a difference, but I guess I'll do it. But this, so this is exactly how the announcement sounded that day on the boat. Hey, everybody, this is Mater. Like Tom Mater without the tough. Boy, I tell you what, I'm happier in a tornado in the trailer park that you had me come on this boat and, and that y'all come on and visit us too. And I'll tell you what, if you ever get to Radiator Springs, she will do some backward driving. All right then, this is Mater. And don't forget, you and me, we's best friends. Now hold on, here's my buddy Larry the Cable Guy to say something to you. Hey everybody, this is Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, everybody. Hey, uh, thank you so much. I think, uh, I'm, uh, thanks for having me at this. This is a, a big deal. I know that Dave and them wanted me, you guys are gonna come out and do something with me. But thanks for having me. This is really awesome that you would invite me to this. So I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Come on, everybody. Thank Larry you. Larry the Cable Guy. So awesome. Is this mine? Or is that yours? Why don't I sit in the yeah, middle of you? Wherever you like. Yeah, you don't want me to sit on the end. <laughs> People, there's a lot of eye candy up here. <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> a lot of eye candy. <laughs> Man, uh, so, so I, think, I think one of the great things about this particular time is that uh, in all the times that you've gone out and done comedy, you've never done that as Larry the Cable Guy and then come off of that persona, that character and then just really just get to be the real you. No, you know what? This will be awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in, you know, whenever, people always say he's always Larry the Cable Guy, and I say to myself, well, because when I go out and do stuff, you hire me to be Larry the Cable Guy. So every time people see me, I'm Larry the Cable Guy. And I have never, ever been on stage where I have not done myself after the show. So right now I'm gonna do it. So I will do my real voice for you guys. This is the real- Ladies and gentlemen. Dan Whitney is in the house. Come on, the real Dan Whitney. A rare, rare treat. Um, thank you very much. You know, when I first started doing the character, I was quite surprised about the whole thing. And so fantastic, just fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, when I, you know, it's really funny. I grew up in Nebraska on a pick, on a, go Big Red, Turner Gill, baby, Turner Gill. <laughs> So I grew up in Nebraska on a pig farm, and uh, my whole life was a farm livestock, loading cattle trucks, and, uh, but we didn't really have an accent, you know, but I'm a country boy, and then I moved to Florida, and uh, I lived in Florida, Florida 33 years, and Foxworthy and I have been friends since 1986, and I defy anybody. I went to college in Georgia, Baptist College in Georgia, and, I defy anybody to move to the South and live there more than two years and not start morphing into something kind of like this. You know what I mean? That's so, right. <clears throat> but that, but that's, but uh, that's uh, where I come from. I come from Nebraska, and uh, I'm just a country kid from Nebraska that uh, developed a character, and that's how I do my shows. How did how did you develop? Like Larry Cable Guy was. Obviously, some of you, well, well, right? Well, yeah, then... you know what? I, I did all kinds of characters. I, I wanted to be a comedian, and so I was a comedian, and uh, uh, you're always looking for some extra money because they're not really paying you a lot of money early on. And So I did several characters, and a buddy of mine had a morning show, and he said, uh, man, that thing you're doing, that Larry the Cable Guy, and it was just something that I just did on stage, I never, or on, on the radio. I never thought I would bring it to the stage. Mm -hmm. I, I tried it out on stage when I was just open micing, and it was funny, but it wasn't anything groundbreaking. And, but when I did it on radio, it just struck a nerve. And uh, I, you know, I basically took everybody that I grew up with, and I love All in the Family. It was one. It was a great show, and uh, I just thought it was so funny. So I wanted to take. I wanted to make this guy that was kind of like an Archie Bunker type guy but he was likable, or she was really likable. And so I wanted to make it likable, I wanted to make it funny. Yeah. And so that's how I developed. I never ever thought in a million years I'd do it on stage. And uh, I ended up getting syndicated on three stations, then 27 stations ultimately. Wow. And a lot of people think I came out of nowhere, but I, I used to call in and do social commentaries and they were really crazy. And I called 27 radio stations five days a week for 13 years. Wow. And it just connected. Wow. And somebody billed me one time as Larry the Cable Guy on stage and not my real name. And I kind of got mad because I didn't perform as that. And I said, well, you know what? I'll go up and do a little bit of it. And I couldn't follow it. Mm. I would come out of the character and go into what I do, and it, it tanked. 
And so I got done. He goes, can you do your whole show like that? And I said, yeah, I talk like a redneck 24 hours a day. That ain't a big deal to me. And so that's what I did. I said, if I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to dress like I want. So I went, I literally went back to where I was, my hotel room, and put on what I drove over in the car in. A pair of lace-up roper boots, a pair of jeans, a cut-off sleeveless Nebraska t-shirt, and a NASCAR ball cap. That's what I drove over in. And from that point on, I just, I, I just never went back the other way. If you call the earlier part of our program, you're wondering, what's Larry the Cable Guy doing on VFN TV at Liberty University? We are about to hear, he's going to finish this conversation, but you're going to hear his testimony. He talks about how he was raised, but he says, you know, I gave my life to the Lord. And you're going to see him just go into mm. tears. It's a powerful thing. Wow. We have to be so open in this year of breakthrough as people begin to give their life back to the Lord and allow them to go through these transitions and embrace them, just like Liberty did. Take a look. Awesome. Yeah, so, so you, that's how it started. You live in Nebraska with your family. Please hold your applause till all this is over. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you live in Lincoln, Nebraska. I, Tell us about your like family. We got, it's like we got boogers in our noses or something. You know, everybody's like staring at us. <laughs> Tell us about your family. Uh, my dad was a uh, preacher. Uh, my mom was an Elvis impersonator. Uh, <laughs> I, f I, found, I found that odd myself, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. My mom was a housewife, but my dad was one of those backwoods, southern, I don't know where he got his accent, I think from Missouri, because my dad was from Kansas, and my dad would get to preach, and then my dad oh, will say it, you know, and he'd had the whole thing going on. So my dad was a preacher, and he played guitar with the Everly Brothers in the late 40s, early 50s, and uh, so that's kind of where I get my sense of humor. Everybody in my family's funny. Uh, my dad, uh, <laughs> he was, uh, you know, he was a backwoods preacher, you know? And I grew up kind of uh, in a strange Christian environment because my dad, I mean, he had a master's degree in Greek and uh, two, and he had, uh, he spoke fluent Hebrew, Greek. Wow. He could, you could look at my dad and go, hey, Tom, Isaiah uh, chapter 2, verse 6. And he'd not only say it, he'd say it in Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> but my dad also, coming home from church, was cussing like a sailor. Hmm. Because he was just this back home country preacher. And I always kind of found that kind of strange, <laughs> you know. And it never hurt my faith at all, because humans are humans, you know. But that's the environment, that's the Christian environment that I grew up in. You know, I was a country kid living on a pig farm. My dad was a preacher and cussed like a sailor and played guitar on the weekends. <laughs> so if that's not enough to take some sort of a, a narcotic, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you're, you're, speaking of family, your daughter's name is Reagan. My little girl's name is Reagan. That's right, after the greatest president to ever come across this country. And... Uh, uh, Notice you don't have a son named Clinton. No, no, no. <laughs> Are you? No, but so you're a Republican. <laughs> this, the real Dan Whitney is a yeah, far right no, Republican. We were saying that earlier. I have a dog, though, that I have to let out to take a Dukakis. Okay, I have to do that. But, uh, but no, my, uh, my little girl's name is Reagan, and her first words, believe it or not, were Mr. Larry, tear down this crib. That was her first words. And my little boy is named Nixon. You know, That's a joke. I'm just kidding. His name is not Nixon. His name's Wyatt. He's nine going on Ridlin, and he's a good kid. I love him to death. And, and you know, here's the thing about kids. It's unbelievable that God can create. Because I never had kids. I started late. I was 43 when I got married. Had kids when I was uh, uh, 27, 30, 32. No, just kidding. I was... Uh, 43 when I got married. I'm a first kid at 45. And it's amazing to me how much you just look at this kid and how much kids just not only change your life, but it's just something that God created that you, it's unbelievable how you can just look at it and it just makes you cry and you would do anything for it. And then the next minute you want to slap the garbage out of it. You know what I mean? Because they're so infuriating sometimes, but... <laughs> I love them to death. They're unbelievable. I was going to homeschool our kids, and then my wife reminded, yes, but my wife reminded me I was an idiot, so we didn't do that, so we couldn't do that. 
<laughs> yeah. But I was always scared of bullies and stuff, because my little boys got my little, both of them such good hearts and they're such good kids. And I, and I actually do homeschool my kids. We have a homeschool group where 16 families got together. And uh, it's, a, it's an awesome situation. And, uh, but I was just always worried about bullies, you know, because I remember I was bullied once and, and a fourth grader uh, wanted to beat me up and it freaked me out, but I did the right thing. I went back out, I got in my car and I told my wife she could go pick the kids up from school next time. So that's what I did. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should have done my whole bit from the table. You know what I mean? I might have. Well, we know that part of raising kids and having a great family is uh, a huge part of that is spiritual growth. And, and one of the guys that you listen to, I think, on a daily basis is David Jeremiah, yeah, who just David spoke Jeremiah. here. His grandson is, uh, his, his grandson is a student right here. here David Todd, I don't know where he is, but he's a student here. There he is, plays on the football team. Yeah, and, he, uh, uh, we actually went to breakfast a few uh, months ago. Was it about like last month? Yeah. We went like to that. breakfast, mm -hmm. and your dad owes me like $32 for that. He walked out on that breakfast, so <laughs> tell Dr. Jeremiah. And I like Ravi Zachariah, too. I listen yeah, he's to Ravi. Great. He's but great. There, a lot of Ravi, though, you have to like go to a dictionary and try to figure out what he yeah, says every 10 minutes. A while. It's pretty deep stuff. But uh, tell us about your faith in Christ, how you came to know the Lord and, well, and all that. I came to know Jesus when I was a kid. And uh, like I said, I grew up. And you know, it's kind of crazy with me because, and I always wondered if, it's really hard to be a preacher's kid and have any kind of a cool testimony. You know, because you always hear these people give their testimony. And, and then I got into drugs and I was half dead and I was doing this. And then the Lord pulled me up. I don't have that story. I became a Christian when I was a kid, uh, did everything, went to a Baptist school, we, we did the outreach, I mean, everything. And then, like always, like a lot of preacher's kids, you, you just fall by the wayside. And you know he's always there, God has never left me, he's always been with me, all the time. But then you get in the entertainment business, let me tell you something about the entertainment business, it just pulls you in. I've never drunk. I've never done drugs. I've never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. I will say that there's a lot of things. Well, the, to make a long story short, um, I kind of fell in that depths of that, that garbage for a while. Mm -hmm. And then about two years ago, I rededicated my life. And uh, yeah. I got to tell you. This is, this is always rough for me to talk about because uh, I love Jesus so much. And I just, I feel, I didn't want to do this tonight, but I just feel horrible about some of the things that I've done. And unlike other people, everything that I did and said is on tape for everybody to see. I'm proud. I'm proud of some things that I've done. I've had an awesome career. I've done some amazing things. But there's things that I've done on stage now that I'm back in the fold and I'm back with my Savior. There's things that I look back on and I wish I wouldn't have done it. And men don't forgive you. And I don't care if men forgive me or Jesus forgives me. You know what I mean? And that's, he, he dies in, and it's, well, you know, it's, when I, people always say, oh, what are you gonna go up there and cry about stuff? It's not that I'm sad, I'm happy. It, you know, I'm happy, you know. I've always been happy. Those years that I went down into the, the depths, you know, and you're doing stuff, I wasn't as happy. I knew Jesus was always there, but I wasn't as happy. Um, I've never lost my salvation. Jesus isn't gonna let me go, because I, that was the self, I got saved when I was a kid, and by gosh, by the things I was, I was saved. But the devil gets a hold of you, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he never, Jesus never leaves you. The prodigal son, he's always there if you come back to him. And I came back to him, and I'm not perfect. It's like my buddy Beeman, my tour manager says, and God brought him to me. I got branches still falling off me. 
You know, I ain't a, I ain't a complete tree. I got branches still fall, just like everybody else. As brand, there's nobody in here that's perfect. And uh, we're a constant, we're a constant, uh, we're a constant work. But I'm glad I came back into the fold, and, and I'm happier than I've ever been in my entire life. And it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with fame, because fame and money and all the glitz never makes you happy. Because I can sit here right now and tell you that I was way happier. Not now. Now I got full happiness because I'm back in the full. But I got to tell you, five years ago, I wasn't as happy as I am now. And I had anything I ever wanted. I could do anything I wanted. I could buy anything I wanted. It just didn't have that complete happiness. There was something missing. It was there. It was just buried inside of me. And well, anyway, make a long story short, I rededicated my life two years ago. I'm glad I did. I'm very happy I did. I'm a work in progress. I'm doing the best I can to glorify God in everything I do, everybody I see. When people come to my shows, it's not perfect. I'm doing my best. I pray to God, make sure that, and I'm not a, you know, I was never really over the line that much. But there's things I did that I didn't, you know, enjoy. Like I used to, I used to do, do jokes about handicapped and this and that. I thought it was funny. It's not funny, mm -hmm. especially if you have a kid that's like that. Yeah. And so I said, and people had always said to me, "Am I going too long?" No. Okay. People had always said to me, "Well, I got to go to the bathroom." People had said to me, <laughs> but people had always said to me, "Well, you need to quit doing that. It's offensive." And then I had other people that said, "Well, no, it's not." And when I was a kid, I worked with retarded kids all the time, and now it's special needs, whatever. I'm mean, not good on the terms, um, but I didn't think anything of it because I worked with them. But then. But then as I had kids, I realized the hurt that causes people. And so I quit doing it. But I'm glad that I didn't quit doing it because people forced me to quit doing it. I'm glad I did it because my inside was changed to not do it. Because if you stop doing it just because somebody doesn't like it and you do it just to not offend them, it's, it's not the same. It's the same when you do it because you inside really want to make that change. And so there was things like that that I, yeah. that I, uh, there were things like that that I'm working on, you know, and, uh, but, it, but it's really cool at my shows. It's like, it's like my wife has a crazy ministry. My wife grew up on a cattle ranch and uh, you would never know my wife grew up on a cattle ranch in a million years because she's got a, a pig face. And so we, uh, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. My wife is gorgeous. She's hot, trust me. Anyway, she will be after she finds out about yeah. that joke I just did, I'll tell you that much. No, my wife is fantastic and she's my best friend and she's gorgeous. And, but she grew up on a cattle ranch and she found the Lord about three years ago. And uh, her ministry is basically, you know, she's a beautiful wife to my kids, but she's on the internet all the time, constantly witnessing to people and all their friends from school. And it's kind of like me. I work with Foxworthy a lot, and we talk, we talk about this a lot. You know, Jeff has sold 38 million comedy CDs. So between me and him together, we've sold over 38 million comedy CDs. <laughs> but we talk about this a lot. You know, God puts people in different positions where he thinks they will be effective. That's right. And it doesn't matter what you do. God puts you in positions to, of effectiveness. And I feel like Jeff and I, especially Jeff, and I've learned this from Jeff, we're in the entertainment business that's one of the most ungodly businesses on the planet. Jeff and I are in a position to do our shows. And when people see us in our daily lives different than them right. and happy and a shining light, it's such a great field yeah. to witness in. And, I, and I've, always, I've always loved the, the verse, whoever will seek will find. If you're not seeking, you're not looking for it. But when people see you and they see something in you yeah. and they're not happy inside, they're going to seek it out. They're going to ask you what makes you happy. And that's why everywhere I go, I got this, uh, your deal. Yeah. Everywhere I go, I wear the stand up for Jesus thing on my wrist. Mm -hmm. Hoping that somebody goes, hey, what's that on your wrist? And that starts the conversation. But anyway, I didn't want to be a baby tonight. I'm just very happy that, that I've rededicated my life. And, uh, 
it's uh, what a powerful yeah. word and it's awesome to be here with all these people it's cool to be in a room full of a, a bunch of christians yeah. You know, and the only thing that scared me today was we were flying in the plane, and I hate flying, but we're flying in, and we hit major turbulence. And I'm thinking, really? I don't hit major turbulence when I'm going to, you know, do shows for unsaved people, and here I am coming to see the Christians, and I'm about to die over here. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Anyway. Hey, I just want you to know, brother, that uh, you're in a room full of just sinners saved by grace, and so That's we right. were with you, brother. We That's were watching right. God... We're watching God teach you, and um, your honesty and your transparency in the last five, ten minutes as you've just been sharing about how you just feel convicted about your past. I mean, what a great testimony of what good is it for a man to gain the whole world but to forfeit his soul. And, right. and people always think, if I had money, if I had fame, uh, you know, I, I would be happy. You're such a testimony if you can have all of that and still, still like, not have contentment in your soul. So we, we are grateful what God's doing in your life. Thank you, brother. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Powerful. Oh, yeah. I'm Tell glad us. I did. I've been, I'm glad I did. I've been, waiting, I've been waiting to be able to do it. You know, I've been waiting to share that with somebody because yeah. the places I work, nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> That's so powerful, you know, to just be so open and, and transparent and authentic. We've got to so embrace when God, God's going to be bringing many of his sons mm -hmm. and daughters back. People that have never known him before are going to come. And they're going to come just like we come with all of our luggage and all of our things. And we can't, we just got to embrace them. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. I think about this. I think about when Jesus said, this is kind of how it is. You had this one man that was coming up and he looked towards the temple and he just thought, oh man, you know, I feel so bad about myself, mm -hmm. my shame, my sin. And he falls to his knees and he starts beating his chest, mm -hmm. right? And then this other guy, he stood up in some flowing robe and he's a Pharisee. This is Jesus, the son of God telling us the story. And he says, and this was his prayer. He said, I just thank God I'm not like him. And point, mm. is pointing them down basically to the man that was beating his chest. And this is what God says through his son. He said, the one that's beating his chest, the one that has all this luggage that just humbled his heart and just said, you know, I want Jesus, but I know I need forgiveness. I mean, that's the one that made it. The one that was in yeah. this flowing robe didn't make it. Yeah. And when, when God's, I mean, we're, we're going to, breakthrough is not just a financial breakthrough. It's a financial, it's a breakthrough for kingdom finances to be able to bring in the harvest. And you're going to start seeing, I mean, you, th you, th you think about, you know, um, all, all the wealth that he has gained, you know, in his career. And now he's saying, listen, I just want to be able to, to bless. And we didn't, we'll make the whole thing available to you on the VFN torch, but he talks about, I think a half a million dollar foundation in Orlando, Florida, wow. the hip dysplasia that they, uh, building for babies all around the world to be able to to be, uh, they're having to get these plastic hips. These babies are being held mm. wrong. And it's a real simple thing to be able just to educate people on how you hold your baby. And so they're willing, they, they built this entire wing onto a hospital in Orlando, I believe it is. And uh, it's called Get Her Done. His fund's <laughs> called Get Her Done. And they're doing all these things, you know, for military and for families. And there's so many wonderful things. It reminds me of the scripture, those who have been forgiven much, love much. Yeah. And so when you recognize what God's done in your life, you say, man, I, I just want to love him and I want to love right. other people. I want to give it all back to him. It's, it's the most beautiful thing. thing to see those transitions take place. It's just, it's just we, have to, we have to guard the environment to make sure that, that they don't become so beautifully raw and all of a sudden they become religious. And yes. it's like, oh, what happened to you? Yes. <laughs> you got a flowing robe on. You used to be so yeah. authentic. And, uh, and we really try to do that here on VFN TV and in the VFN family, just like, you know, we're real, we're, you know, we're saved by God's grace. We share our testimonies at meetmyfather.org so you can know a little bit about us. But, you know, God forgives. And we're looking at, you know, Larry the Cable Guy, Daniel Whitney's his actual name, and that's a character that he plays. And, uh, and he's given his life to the Lord, and it's been a couple years now. His wife's witnessing the and folks he's on And begging, there. begging someone to ask, ask him, what, me. what does this mean? As a matter of fact, we, if mean? you would like it, we have an I Abide armband for yes. you. You know, we have to be able to send that to you. You can just call and request it or write to us. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.